There are two ways you can slow down a car. One is by using the gears and one is by using the brakes. I'm doing 55 miles an hour at the moment in sixth gear and I'm gonna use the gears to slow down. So off the gas, clutch down into fourth gear, lift the clutch to the bite point. I know I'm at the bite point because the car starts slowing. And when the revs finish rising, I can come fully off the clutch. You can rev match your heel and toe if you like. I'll leave a link to that in the top right hand corner of your screen. I have a video all about it. Now the car's slowing down, I'm gonna skip down into second gear, lift the clutch to the bite point, when the revs have finished rising, there we go, I am come fully off the clutch. And I've just slowed down from around about 50 something miles an hour to less than 20, only using the gears. I could have gone down one gear at a time if I'd liked, that would have slowed the car down more gradually. And if I was in an automatic, I could have also used the gears to slow down because nearly all automatics on the road these days give you the option to change gear yourself. And of course, the other way to slow down a car is to simply use the brakes. I'm doing 57 miles an hour in sixth gear. I'm gonna start braking now. When the revs get near 1,000 RPM, I'll hold the clutch down so the car doesn't stall, which is now. Some people like to go into neutral and come back off the clutch again to save the clutch release bearing from wearing as quickly, but both methods work fine. There we go. No gears used, and I've just stopped the car. I recently made a video about these two methods, slowing down with the gears and slowing down with the brakes, the advantages and disadvantages of both. And there was quite a popular comment on that video. I'll leave a link to the video up there if you're interested. And the comment was, if you use the gears to slow down when it's slippery or icy, that can reduce your chances of skidding. But is that true? Well, maybe. There's certainly an advantage of using the gears to slow you down when it comes to skidding, but there's also some disadvantages. I'm gonna quickly get up to speed now so I can show you the advantage. And the advantage is simply this. You slow down gradually. So I'm gonna come off the gas now, go down into fourth, slowing down very gradually, 52, 51, 50. You certainly wouldn't wanna do this in an emergency. If it's an emergency, use the brakes. To increase the level of engine braking I have, I'm gonna go down to second gear. There we go, it's slowing down a bit more quickly now. 36, 35, but this is the reason why you're less likely to skid if you slow down using the gears. It simply slows down very gently. You know it's gonna slow down gently, so you start slowing down earlier. It's not because the car is more balanced or has more grip. You could say that you have less grip and less balance when you're trying to slow down a car using the engine or the gears. And I'm gonna try and use this model of a Fiat 500 to explain why. A very important car this, nearly four million sold between 1957 and 1975. This was the transport for many people. Now the trouble is, most cars are only two wheel drive. In this old Fiat, it's rear wheel drive. In most cars on the road today, front wheel drive. Some cars have four wheel drive, but most of those are front wheel drive most of the time with the rear wheels only coming into action as and when they need to. Not many cars are permanent four wheel drive in the UK, a very low percentage. Now the trouble with using only two wheels to slow the car down, well, that's not as good as four wheels. So if you're two wheel drive and using the engine to slow down, if it's front wheel drive, it's only the front wheel slowing the car down. If it's rear wheel drive, it's only the rear wheels. If you use your brake, you're using all four wheels. That's better. You have more grip if all four wheels are trying to slow you down. But there's more to it than that. There's balance. If you're going downhill and you slow the car down with only the front wheels, the rear is more inclined to try and overtake the front and put the car into a spin. If it's rear wheel drive, it's not such a problem because you're slowing down the rear wheels. But if you're on a bend, and you slow down the rear wheels, you're also more likely to spin. So if you're gonna slow a car down, it's actually better to use all four wheels. And that moves me on to a major advantage about the brakes. As I said, you're using all four wheels. They're balanced as well. So there's more braking on the front than the rear to counteract the fact that when you brake, the car does lean forwards a bit, so more force is needed on the front brakes. The front brakes are usually bigger as well and you have ABS, and these days most cars are four channel ABS, and those systems are really good. All four wheels are monitored, and when one wheel starts to skid, it will reduce braking to only that wheel. 
I think most cars since 2010 have been four channel, though don't hold me to that, but most cars since 2010 I've driven have had very good ABS systems. The older systems, like uh, the one in my 2001 Vauxhall VX220, that was a two channel system and that wasn't very good. So that has two channels, which means two wheels for each channel. And in that car, these two wheels were controlled by one channel and these two wheels were controlled by another. And if one of these two wheels started to skid, it would reduce braking to both of them. And because the computer was old and the software wasn't very good, it would reduce the braking too much for too long. I could brake moderately, go over a manhole cover and it would reduce my braking significantly. And it was so slow to realize that I was no longer on the manhole cover, it was quicker for me to come off the brakes and reapply again to get my braking back. Many people say that ABS doesn't work when it's icy or slippery. And to a certain extent, they're right. You see, a car could be skidding along the ice, but the ABS computer thinks the car is actually stationary. And that could be because the driver is braking. All four wheels have stopped moving, so the ABS computer thinks the car isn't moving. Therefore, it's not going to do its job of releasing the brake on each wheel to try and keep the car from skidding and maintain your steering. But that's not likely to happen with the latest ABS systems. When I say latest, I am talking the last 10 years or even further back than that. Because each wheel is monitored so often that the chances of all four wheels stopping together whilst the car is moving is just very unlikely. There's always gonna be one wheel turning so the ABS computer knows that the car is still moving. However, there is a disadvantage about braking with ABS on snow you don't get the snow plow effect. So if you're skidding along the snow, snow starts to build up in front of each of the wheels, helping the car stop. You don't get this with ABS, but you don't get it with engine braking either. The quickest way to stop a car is with the foot brake. And if you have four channel ABS, that's even better. It's important to understand that different cars give you different levels of engine braking. So I'm in fourth gear now down this hill, just under 20 miles now, I'm off the gas. Let's see if the car speeds up or slows down on this hill. I better not let it speed up because of this speed camera down here, but it's actually speeding up there, 29 from 28. And it reached 29 miles per hour and then slowed back down to 28. So it didn't slow down, but it didn't really speed up much either. It only sped up by one mile an hour. But in this 2020 Mazda MX-5 two litre, Let's see what happens. I'm in fourth gear again. I'm just below 30 miles an hour. Off the gas now, and let's see if it slows down or speeds up. Feels like it's slowing down. That's close to 25 miles an hour now. Getting close to 20 miles an hour. This car gives me a lot of engine braking. In fact, I get similar amounts of engine braking in sixth gear in this car than I do in fourth gear in my other car, the petrol 1.4 turbo petrol Sayat Leon. Another advantage of using engine braking over your foot brake is you're less likely to lock a wheel. When you use the foot brake, the brakes want to stop your wheel. And if there isn't much grip, it's more likely to stop that wheel and you're gonna skid. Whereas the engine doesn't wanna stop. It just wants to slow down. Therefore, it's only gonna slow down your wheels. Even if there's a lack of traction, it's not gonna lock those wheels. It will just slow them down. So you should maintain control of your steering. So does engine braking reduce your chances of skidding? Well, overall, I would have to say yes, because you have to slow down more gradually. But if you need to stop in an emergency or you need to slow down quickly, your brakes are gonna do that better. You can slow down much more quickly with your foot brake, but if you practice engine braking, your driving style means you're gonna be less likely to get yourself in a position where you have to brake hard. So when it's slippery, should you use engine braking or should you use the foot brake? Well, the choice is yours. Personally, I believe a combination of both of them and even using them both at the same time gets you the best of both worlds. So here's an example of using the foot brake and engine braking at the same time. I'm braking and going down the second, so I'm using both. I'm getting the best of both worlds. I'm slowing down with the brakes, so I can slow down more quickly if I need to, but also I'm getting a lower gear, so I'm ready to continue. Here, I only need the foot brake because I'm already in second gear, 
and you don't generally use first gear for engine braking it's a little bit too harsh and many cars don't like you selecting first gear when you're moving it's better to get to a near standstill or at least less than five miles an hour before you try and use first gear well if you think the video helps please give it a thumbs up and check out Collingwood and Confused in the description if you're learning to drive and want to insure yourself on somebody else's car Collingwood are there for you because you can insure yourself on their car and it doesn't affect their policy and via the link at the moment is up to 35% off and a £20 Amazon gift card if you're insuring your own car check out confused.com with confused you fill out one quote form get loads of quotes back from different insurers to compare who's cheapest and you can change your car on that quote as many times as you like to see how much it costs to insure different cars using the links doesn't cost you anything but it does support the channel so thank you very much subscribe to get my future videos and until the next one cheerio